In this video, we're going to learn how to check if a number is prime or not using a recursive function in C. So first off, what are prime numbers? So prime numbers are natural numbers greater than one, divisible only by one and the number itself. Where a number is divisible by another number if the remainder after division is zero. So for example, we could check if five is a prime number or not by trying to divide five by all the integers between one and five. So we could try to divide five by two, by three, and by four. And if any of these divisions result in a remainder of zero, we would say five is not a prime number. Here, all the divisions result in a remainder that is not zero. Therefore, five is a prime number. We could also check if six is a prime number in the same way. We could try to divide six by two, three, four, and five. And here, because dividing six by two and three results in a remainder of zero, we would say six is not a prime number. Now when checking if a number is prime or not, it's not going to be possible for the number to be divisible by numbers that are greater than half the number itself. So in the case of six, six divided by two is three. So beyond this point, we don't really need to check if six is divisible by four or five. We know that's not possible. We know there's going to be a non-zero remainder. So let's build a recursive function to determine if a number is prime or not. So up here, we'll declare a function. The function is going to return a bool value. So we'll include the stdbool.h library so we can use the bool type and the values true and false. So we'll call the function prime checker, and the function is going to have two parameters, an int n and an int i. The function is going to return true if n is a prime number and false otherwise. And as part of the function's execution, we'll divide n by i and see if n is divisible by i. So we'll copy this and supply a definition of the function down here. The first thing we'll do is implement a couple base cases. So if n is less than or equal to one, by definition, n is not prime. So if n is less than or equal to one, we're going to return false because we know n is not prime. Now two is a special number. The only possible numbers that could divide two are one and two itself. And so two is the only even prime number. So we'll also check for that. So we'll have here else if n is equal to two, then we're going to return true because two is special. It's the only even prime number. Then we'll check to see if n is divisible by i. So we'll have here else if n modulus i is equal to zero, then we're going to return false. So the modulus operator is going to give us the remainder of n divided by i. And if the remainder is zero, then we know that n is divisible by i and n is not a prime number. So we're going to return false in that case. Now we're going to call prime checker repeatedly and increment i by one each time we do. Once i reaches n divided by two, then we know n is a prime number. So we'll check for that next. We'll have here, else if i is greater than or equal to n divided by two, then we've checked all the possible numbers and we're going to return true in this case because we know that n is a prime number. Then finally, we'll have our recursive case. We'll have here, else return prime checker and we'll call prime checker with n and i plus one. So here, we're going to repeatedly call prime checker and pass it i plus one to check the next possible i value. And either n is going to be divisible by some i value, or we're going to reach this point where i is greater than or equal to n divided by two, at which point we're going to return true. So we can now test this function out. Up here, we'll call prime checker. We'll call prime checker and we'll pass it seven to check if seven is prime or not, and seven is prime. We'll also pass it two as the initial i value. Now, if this function returns true, that means seven is prime. 
So we'll put this function call inside an if statement condition. We'll have here, if prime checker returns true, then we'll output that seven is prime. We'll have printf and seven is prime, followed by a new line. Otherwise, in the else case, we'll output here, seven is not prime, followed by a new line. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll get that seven is prime, which is correct. Now we could trace through the execution of this function. So if we pass the function seven and two, that means that n is going to be seven and i is going to be two. So initially with n being seven, we'll have that n is not less than or equal to one. So we're not going to return false. n does not equal two. So we're not going to return true. Then we'll check n divided by i. So seven divided by two is going to give us three remainder one. The remainder of this division operation is not zero. So we're not going to return false. And i is not greater than or equal to n divided by two because n divided by two is going to be seven divided by two, which is going to be three is not going to be 3.5 because here we're going to have integer division. So we're going to have that two is not greater than or equal to three. So we're not going to return true. Instead, we'll call the function again with n being seven and i plus one. So i is now going to be three. Now with n being seven and i being three, we're still going to have that n is not less than or equal to one and that n is not equal to two, then we'll again check n divided by i. So this time we'll have seven divided by three and seven divided by three is going to be two remainder one. So again, the remainder is not zero. So we're not going to return false. Then if we check if i is greater than or equal to n divided by two, this time three is greater than or equal to three. So we are going to return true. And this function is going to confirm that seven is prime. So this function is a recursive solution to check if a number is prime or not. There are some potential improvements though that we can make. So right now we have to supply this function with an initial I argument of two. It would be nicer if we could just call a function and supply it with N as an argument. What we'll do is make a wrapper function and the wrapper function will just accept n as an argument and the wrapper function will call prime checker and supply it with two as the initial i argument. Now these first two checks here, if n is less than or equal to one and if n is equal to two, if they're not true the first time the function is called, they're not going to be true on subsequent calls to the function with i plus one. So we could also make these checks in the wrapper function. Finally, each time this function is called, we're going to be dividing n by two. We could just do that once in the wrapper function as well and supply it as an argument to this function. So let's implement an alternative version of prime checker with these changes. So we'll copy this and we'll make a prime checker two function. And the function will now have three parameters. We'll have a parameter int stop as well. Down here, we'll call prime checker two and we'll pass it n stop and i plus one. Stop is going to be n divided by two. So instead of n divided by two here, we'll just have stop. And now we'll get rid of these two checks here because those are going to be done in our wrapper function. So we'll begin with this as the if statement case. Then we'll make a function called is prime that's also going to return a bool. The is prime function is only going to accept a single int as an argument. So I'll have here int n, where n is the number that we're checking to see whether it's prime or not. This function will check to see if n is less than or equal to one and if it is, it's going to return false. The function will check to see if n is equal to two, and if it is, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return the return value of calling prime checker two with n, 
and n divided by 2 as the stop value and an initial i value of 2. So up here, we can now just call is prime with 7 as an argument. So here we'll have is prime and we'll pass it 7. And we'll add the function declarations for prime checker 2 and is prime. So we'll have bool prime checker 2 with int n and int stop and int i. And we'll have bool is prime with int n. So now if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll again get that 7 is prime. But this time we only had to supply 7 as an argument to the function. So this is how we can determine if a number is prime or not using recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.